come around this time and bring the message and pray for him. God might use him and ask him to go along with God. And I raise the lost souls. If you want to hear the son saved, I tell the Lord, this be go that you accept the Lord. And you'll say, come right here. That's the Lord. If we should be near that, we should have opportunity to come and pray. You got your Bible in front of you, Romans chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32 tonight. I'm switching out on very got a hard subject, but it's one of my favorite subjects. Sometimes takes a lot to try to get out of it. I hope the Lord takes it and all of it. Give it what it needs tonight to make it special. I hope it'll come alive to you tonight in your heart. I appreciate the goodness of the Lord. I appreciate his mercy. What it's doing tonight. Deuteronomy chapter 32. The Lord will help us tonight. We're going to switch on the eagle. Hey. Hey. We're going to try to bring a lot of, a lot of bad in my eyes. And I hope that I hope we'll see more than just the eagle with a natural eye. Amen. We'll see the eagle that says me and you. And we'll see daddy eagle as God. We'll see mama eagle as the Holy Spirit is teaching and a lead. Amen. Amen. God. Right. And I hope the Lord will show us to us. Yeah. Learn something out of this tonight. I learned a long time ago that it takes him to preach. That's right, man. I mean, it takes him to preach. And I hope he'll preach to us tonight. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Let's begin reading with verse 10. He found him in a desert land, in a waste house in the wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him at the apple of his eye. And as an eagle stirs up her nest and flutters over her young, Spread her broad her wings, take it them, and bear them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. Amen. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, that he might even increase the field. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock, and oil out of the plenty rock. Butter of kine, and milk of sheep with fat of lambs, and rams of the breed of nations and goats for the fat of the kidneys of wheat. Thou didst drink the pure blood of the grave. Brother Charles, I pray, if you will. Yeah. 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 Our yeah. Heavenly Father and our God, we thank you, Lord, tonight for this another privilege and opportunity of prayer. We thank you, God, for this another time that we sit together in heavenly places, God, to listen to the Word of God preached tonight. And I pray, God, that you just touch Brother Nate tonight, God. I would have flown into the power of the Spirit, God, that you yes, might have delivered God. this message, God, that I just God, laid and burdened up on his heart tonight. Help us to receive it and God apply it in our lives. And God, I pray for this congregation, each and every one of us, God, that you will settle together and sit beside us by the Lord and how the Spirit of God will be served. Uh, uh, Lord, through a heart and a life, God, to see what we have us to do, Lord, uh, in this service tonight. Lord, it might give us, uh, you give an increase unto it, God, is one soul, but uh, one planet, one soul, one water, but God, it's you that always gives increase tonight. I pray, God, you reach down from heaven with love and smile upon us with the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, God, to give increase unto this message tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Lord, I want to direct your attention tonight to verse 11. Verse 11. As an eagle stirs up her nest, flutters over her young, spreads her broad her wings, and takes them, and burns them on her wings. Amen. Bless the Lord. I hope tonight we'll see something about this eagle we've never seen. I hope we'll touch our hearts and our lives. Give us something fresh tonight about this eagle. I hope it'll do something for us. I want to look at some starting experiences with an eagle. If anything else, they start experiences about an eagle. And, uh, we, want to, we want to look at the home of the eagle, the heart of the eagle, the heritage of the eagle, the habits of the eagle, and the honor of the eagle. Amen. All you. together. Amen. We want to look at starting experiences with the eagle, first with the home of the eagle. There's a working and a waiting period with an eagle. When they begin to have side of their children being born, their eaglets, there's a building period, first of all. That's right. They'll build and then they'll work in their way. Yes. They'll begin to build them a nest somewhere in the cleft of the rock. They'll build and they'll build. The superstructures come made of sticks and mud and leaves. 
And then finally they'll take a fur lining of some animal and they'll line the nest of their nest and where it'll be just right for a little baby eagle to be born. An Australian eagle, he takes a kangaroo and lines it. And a great American eagle, he'll take a rabbit or a squirrel. A Bolivian island eagle, he'll take a monkey. But all of them use some kind of fur lining to line the nest for their young. You'll find the building characteristics of an eagle all the way some work similar to each other, whether it's the great bald eagle or the golden eagle or the Australian eagle or the black eagle of Africa. They all have built and characteristics similar to each other. Not only are they building, but during this building they're warning and they're waiting. Finally comes the day of incubation. It comes the time for the laying of the eggs. And the last the eggs are laid. And an eagle is a distinct bird. Because being of the family of the condors and the falcons, but being distinctly different, yes. they work together with their young, mama and daddy together. Yes. That stirred my heart when I read that and said it back. That the mama and the daddy work together with them. Yes. They don't separate, let mama do it all, but they don't separate, let daddy do it all. Yes. But if mama's the one to do that and get ready to go up, Daddy will sit out and go up those eggs. He'll wait on Mama to come back. They work together, hand in hand, and working and waiting and then warming and waiting. Amen. Amen. And I like this. People tell me that Eagle, when Mama's sitting on the eggs, Daddy Eagle and Mama's sitting over there on the eggs, Daddy Eagle will sit out beside her. He'll stick out of his talons and his claws and his feet and have joint talons, Mama and Daddy together. Daddy will kiss and woo on her and Amen. speak love and the eagle talk to her. Amen. Then when Daddy gets up and Mama sits on the edge, oh Mama Eagle, she'll lock talons again with Daddy Eagle. Amen. And they'll kiss on him and woo her. Oh, there's a courtship there, my love. They love with each other. And God give me the day. An opportunity to fall back in love with the Lord Jesus Christ yeah. and love hands with it and work and labor for the kingdom of God. Yeah. A building period, which is working and waiting. A brooding period, which is warming and waiting. Then finally, there's a birthing period. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, every time during the incubation period, there comes a birthing day. And in an eagle's life, there comes a birthing day. There's three things Mama Eagle does to her eaglets when they're birthed. First of all, she stands them up and gets a look at those babies. <laughs> the next thing she does, she'll clean them up and get all that afterbirth off of them. Get a good look at that little old baby. And then she'll bring them up and teach them little old eaglets. Paul can make to a feeling eagle. Let me tell you today, do you remember when God stood you up? Hey, hey, hey. How he saved you by the grace of God stood you up? Hey, hey, hey. And then he cleaned you up. It's a progressive step of sanctification. Hey, hey. We're not just preaching and talking about God, hey, hey. but day by day and night by night, hey, hey. God's labor and working with us and making something out of us. Amen. Hey, hey. It brings us up. The Bible says, Twain of time away she goes. In the love and admonition of the Lord. Amen. God help us today as daddies and mamas and future daddy and mamas. Right, to bring our children up in the admonition of the Lord. Amen. To the nourishment of the Lord. Don't you look tonight and all it. Well, the building booty is birthing, but they were born in a high place. An eagle's nest is not built in a little small little crate of work. But an eagle's nest is built in the cliffs of the rock. Amen. Far above this world, he'll play up and build him a nest of fire. Somebody said, why is he doing it? He don't want to live above. He wants to live above the pollution of this world. He wants to rise above the storm and live above this world. Amen. Today, me and you were born in the world. Amen. We were born again by spiritual Amen. high places, beloved. How I mean, the Savior left the lofty dwelling place of heaven right. and came down that we might be birthed by him Amen. in his precious blood. Amen. Somebody said, why should we live? We need to live above the pollution of the world. They know that the higher the eagle was, the closer to God he got. And that's 
that's what we need today. Right, we right. need to get out of the can and close to God in the can. Right. Mama Eagle does three things with this evening. She loves them first of all. With an unstructable love. Jeremiah said he loved us with an everlasting love. Amen, amen, and then she feeds them. Yeah. An eagle doesn't eat any kind of dead meat, beloved. An eagle won't eat no rotten meat. Amen. Has to be fresh. Has to be fresh, beloved. And I like this as I studied and read and prepared. The eagle's mother, when she kills her food, or prey, or the dead eagle, they always chew the food up Amen. in her mouth, making sure there's no bones. Making sure there's no collective items that shouldn't be there. They'll begin to chew it up. Chew it up. And then she'll give it to that little eagle to eat. Somebody said that's nasty, not so, beloved. That's love. That's what that is.
bad night's sleep, you call it. He rises off of the nest and goes to the rock again. And Mama and Daddy Eagle and these sin again behind him. This time they not only tap the, the lining of the animal's fur, but they tap the superstructure of the nest and drop it off the side of the mountain. And there's no nest no more. When Baby Eagle is returned to the nest, there's no nest. There's just a cold yeah. rock. Let me give you this about the rock. An eagle's rock, they're either born on a rock or near a rock. Amen. And they never leave the rock. Amen. They never leave the rock, beloved. They may go in one place, but they always remember where the rock is. Glory to God. How oh, the rock of ages. Cliff for me. They go back to that rock, there's no nest there. The baby eagle sat there all night long, shivering, cold. Cold sitting on that rock. Finally, through a dreariness night of no sleep, Mama and Daddy Eagle come back in the morning. There they are. Mama Eagle. (laughs) He eases up beside Baby Eagle. Little Eagle jumps on Mama's back and says, Oh, Mama, how warm you are this morning. Amen. Man, this rock's been cold last night. But Mama, you are feeling warm this morning. Sure do feel good, Mama. Mama says, get you a good hold, son. Yeah. And in a twinkle of an eye, she springs off the rock. And she's out into the cliff of the rock and into the sky. She says, Baby Eagle is that old child and children do with a fairy hill inside and a children's curiosity. He says, I believe I'll look off Mama's back. See where I'm at. And when he does, he looks off Mama's back and he sees three and four thousand feet of there between the says, Mama, Mama, I'll bust my brains out. <laughs> and at that moment of time, Mama, with a streak of the air, in her wings, she skies toward the sun with her eyes and beat turned upward. And baby holds on for all he can hold on. And then all of a sudden, with every ounce of energy he has, Mama turns upside down. And there he is, a screaming and a holler, Mama, Mama, I'm a falling. And she falls and he falls off. He finally has to turn loose. And there he is, a squalling and a holler, Mama, Mama, he's a falling. And he's a falling and he's a falling. He never looks up. But the thing I like about that yeah. is that Mama can fly faster yes, than he can fall. Great yeah. <laughs> be the day when I found out that the Lord can fly faster than I can fall. Amen. 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 And in a moment of twinkling of an eye, Mama Eagle flies. Whoops it on her back. She said, boy, you talk about grabbing on this time. He grabs on. He brings blood this time off her back. He said, Mama, back to the rock. Back to the rock, Mama. I've had all this I can stand. Take me back to the rock. <laughs> eagle surveyors and eagle studiers and researchers tell me that when baby eagle gets back to the rock that time, they get back like this. <laughs> They're scratching and a pawn, and with a head up, a praising God for being back on the rock. <laughs> back on the rock! Amen. How many times the storm of life hit me? Yes. And you didn't know which way to turn. And all of a sudden, it looked like a church was dried up. And then yes. God would give us a mind due from heaven. And stir us like we've never been stirred. Amen. And you say it's good to be back on the rock again. Amen. 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 Good to be back on the rock. Amen. He just back on the foot of the night sleep. I wasn't gonna finish with it. But I'll finish this part and we'll close. That's him That's him He's just back to the rock. And after another cold night of sleep, he don't complain this time. There's no complacency in the in the, in the words of Eagle talk this morning. But Mama comes back and says, She said, Are you crazy, Mama? You nearly killed me yesterday morning. Yeah. But he knows, see, he's already subdued her. 
on the mumping period of those ages. Let me just touch it. The eagle lives somewhere between 20 and 100 years of age. And between the ages of 30 and 35, they go through what they call a moping period. In other words, what they do is they get on the ground. An eagle is born to fly. And to fly and to live, he must fly. He's got to fly. The eagle wasn't born to walk as a chicken or a turkey or a dove, but he was born to live in the sky. And he's got to fly to be an eagle. At the age of 30 to 35, they go through what they call a moping period. When the eaglet will get discouraged, and he'll fly down to the earth, he begins to dwell, and he lets the affairs of this world entangle his life. And he goes in manic depression, and two out of five come out of this valley, and the other three usually die. See, an eagle will fly above a storm. Not in a storm. Amen. They're not created to go through storms, but they fly above them and look down at them. Not through them, beloved. Amen. God has made a way that we don't have to go through storms like we think we do now. Amen. Through God, we can soar above the storm Amen. and through the valley and a long dwelling place on time. Bless him, Lord. The eagles has two holes on each side of his crooked beak. But he breathes out of it. And he takes his air and oxygen in. And when he gets on the ground, calcium builds up on this eagle's beak and his mouth. And he can't open his mouth properly to eat his food. And his breathing slows down. And then he's a walking on the ground. See, he's discouraged. That's right. and instead of flying above the storms, he's a going through the storm. Yeah, the storms are beating him. And a fly raining on him and a snowing on him. And he's walking and his feet's not made for the ground. But it's made to fly. Amen. And his feet get tender and they bust and they bleed. And there the great eagle is in that valley of depression. And there he is with his feet busting. He can't fly. There he is with his beak calcined over. <laughs> and he can't eat. But beloved, I like this. <laughs> Somewhere between Franklin, North Carolina, and Cherokee, and Gatlinburg, there's a bird that an eagle gets in up there that Indians and other evangelists have studied and looked at and found where these eagles will dwell in for this period of moping season. <laughs> and this evangelist told and said that he went and saw it through an Indian guidance five eagles in this valley. And there they was in the moping period. They couldn't fly, they couldn't eat. They couldn't kill the prey, and they won't eat rotten food. It has to be fresh. But he said there was eight eagles flew in that day. Whole eagles. And it done fought the battle. Woo! Just flew in. Here they come, a fly in the valley. And said they had something in their talons and their feet. And it looked like great humps of fresh meat. And he said all of a sudden as they hid in the woods, him and this Indian, these eagles began to drop this fresh meat right. into those old eagles in the moping season. <laughs> oh, he said he picked up a piece of that rabbit and it already been stripped to the bones. All they had to do was just be there hey, and live. Yeah. Whew. Then, two of the eagles began to eat this flesh. They got over where it was in, and they eat it, and they eat it. He said the old Indian guy got out and began to jump and holler and scream. He said, Eat it, the eagles! Come to live and to eat that food! You won't die, but you live! Hey. <sighs> but three of them wouldn't eat it. Let me say this. God give us a great eagle here at this church. He feeds us, but if we won't eat the food, we'll die spiritually. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Can you see that? If we don't eat, we'll die. All the eagle does was drop the food. He didn't make a big right. But they begin to eat it. Those eagles! I told you about the rod, didn't I? 